Conversate for a few. Welcome to another episode of Conversate for a Few. I'm Jonna. I'm Alan. This is not a podcast about classical music. Absolutely is not. This is a podcast about hip hop. What we doing today, bro? We talking 10 things that changed hip hop forever. Ah, nice, nice. A, a good list. Everybody love a good list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this ain't a list for list's sake. This is a good comprehensive and in-depth list uh based right. on conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? This ain't, this ain't Rolling Stone with they with they malarkey. Yeah. This yeah. ain't even this this is this is uh I ain't gonna start throwing shade this early. Um yeah. <laughs> all right, man. So where, where, where you want to start? Um, I yeah. So I wanted you to give me one from your list uh, first. Okay. Oh man, I want to see where I want to start, man. All right, let's start with uh something historical that I that I okay. don't know that would be on a lot of people's list, and it's actually the first thing I wrote down. So I'm gonna start with the top of my jump. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start with two live crew. And mm. their battle against the government, which gave us the parental advisory sticker that we have on all of the that's so fine, yeah, yeah, on, on every hip hop album you see. You don't even like. Matter of fact, people use. I I did a thumbnail for one of my mans uh, for Mills yeah. earlier this week, and it's for digital only, just for like the like for socials, and it still needed. You know what I mean? The sticker, yeah. Yeah, we, we know to put the stick on it just because it's part of what we do. We know, you know, mm-hmm. it's just law at this point. Um, but a lot of people don't know that had two live crew not taking their case to court, they were being told that they couldn't say what they wanted to say, that they couldn't perform the music that they wanted to perform. Uh, they were being arrested in certain cities, like shows being shut down. Uh, yeah. But they decided to take the thing all the way to the Supreme Court. And it was said that, in order to do the music that they were doing, they needed to be put in the parental advisory sticker on the albums that they were selling. Uh, oddly enough, uh, we live in an era of outraged marketing. And when they did throw the parental advisory sticker on it, it sent um, it sent the sales through the roof. Like yeah. people were like, oh, I gotta yeah. have it at this point. Right. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. more publicity. So it was really worse off for the government if they had just left the people alone, you know? Right. Uh, but that was a big step in censorship against censorship. Uh, yeah. We wouldn't yeah. hear, we wouldn't have heard half of the art that we ended up hearing. You know, right? Had they right. Not that's, done that was, that. that's huge. That's top five. You think it's top that's, five? Yeah. Okay. okay. That was. I, I, I actually, um, I, 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 I had forgot about that one when I was doing the list. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Now that's that's huge. That one's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's a real big one. I think it's it's pivotal in it's pivotal in the arts itself. You yeah. know, uh, it's bigger than hip hop, but it, it it took hip hop to to take up that fight. You know, right to get us where we are today. Which I don't know. You know, some may say based on the content that we get today that it's been downhill since then. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. we went from an era where it was it was it was wild to hear funk. You know what I mean? Like on the radio, mm-hmm. you like, oh shit, they said funk, and then it's you, you got a little risque. You know what I mean? But then yeah. now it's wide open. It's right, right. You know, it's wop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, what what you got? So, uh, <laughs> so one at the top of my list is uh, Nas album Illmatic. I would definitely say so. I mean, it was just the impact of it was just phenomenal. It forced, and we've we you know spoken about it on this show many times, mm-hmm. but it damn near changed how everybody was rapping after that, right? Because yeah. people was like at that time when people was really really concerned with being the best and being nice, everybody had to update bars and their you know the uh the way they were spitting and and um and I, I won't say try to necessarily be like him but it I mean just like like trap came through with a wave and then people mm-hmm. start doing that and people start doing melodic like you know a lot of people are doing the same kind of sound like it was kind of like that people wanted to be more 
For when? Uh, you know, more, more descriptive, you know what I mean, with their words, a little more poetic, you know what I mean? Yeah, they want to be more like, poetic. Yeah. I think they like, realized they could be more poetic. Right. And I want to give, know? I got to, I want to take a whole pot. I'm doing, this is a side note, right? Bit, bit. Now, I want to do a whole podcast to talk about the Nas, Jay-Z, what happened there with Ether Takeover. And I've never given a formal take on what I think about that. And mm. I've honestly never heard a good take on it ever. Wow. Ever. Okay. Because okay. I feel like everybody ignore the biggest thing in the song Takeover, which only one verse is that. Like Takeover, people attribute it to a diss and Nas. Right. Right. The, the whole song, three verses, is a diss. Everything the mob deep. Only right. one verse he attributes to Nas. So right. that's one. But here is one thing that uh, is undeniable historically: that even the greatest rapper, who we deem as the greatest rapper, Jay Z, when he started with Jazzo and the Originators, all in the in the late eighties all the way up to a certain point where he was rhyming fast. And even on the uh, in the 90s, early 90s, when he did In My Lifetime and In My Lifetime Remix, which you hate that song. Right. But he was rhyming a little slower, but he was still do doing the fast rap mixed in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he reinvented himself in 96 with Dead Presidents that he was literally flowing like Nas, like right. on some street, poetic, like right. lyrical, like and that's right. undeniable. So when I right. said when I said uh, you know what I mean he I designed your blueprint or you tried to rhyme like me. That's a fact. He started rhyming like Nas. Everybody did when he when he you know came back out or came out solo in '96. But yeah. um, so that's just one that I want to just use that as one example of why Illmatic was so important. It shifted a lot of people how they rhyme. In particular, it shifted this particular artist who had to essentially reinvent himself and he became one of the best. Right. If uh, not the it, best, right? Most it, people yes. It, it, shifted, it shifted everything because before that, it was it was a scattered land of styles. Yeah. Um, we could say uh, to add to to add to the Nas thing. Um, I'll I'll go back to the era before. The eras before, like when it first started, it was real hip hop was real boxy. It yeah, was, yeah, I, yeah. I drive a I drive a caddy. You fixing a Ford. You know. Yeah. Um. You know what I mean. That kind of stuff. Yeah. You know. Uh. You know. I can't live without my radio. It's still like he was. He was ill. Like you know, people were saying ill things, but. It was real boxy, real choppy. Yeah. Um, and then came Rakim. And he introduced mm -hmm. flow. Like he was the first rapper to have an official flow. Like he understood how to tie the line before to the line next to it. You know what I mean? Right. And and and, and give you that he and give you that nuance and that bop. He gave birth to the flow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he didn't change everything because I think at that particular time he was so advanced that there were only a few people that could even try you know what i mean yeah. like that could get that could get there that fast came being right. one of them uh you know in the master ace thing that the, the you know those dudes was kind of uh kooji rap Kooji you know rap, were yeah. able to 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 adapt and understand you know ll i think picked up and, and ran with it real mm -hmm. fast karis one way they you know people were able to adapt to yeah. it but he was the first one to come through that way uh I don't think it necessarily lasted in the landscape the way Nas did. Yeah. Um because I think like I said, we had had time to progress. You know what I mean? We had been through so many styles. We had been through, you know what I mean, so many ways to flip words and so many different rhyme patterns between yeah. Rock Kim and what you get to Nas. You get a real exploratory uh, era. Mm -hmm. So I think when Nas came through, we were able to not be as good as him, but adapt a little quicker but because we had tried a lot more than had been tried before Rakim came. Right, right. Agreed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but I still, I put Rakim right there next to Nas as far as Absolutely. changing the landscape because yeah. you don't get a, you know what I mean? But I do mm -hmm. honestly believe that Nas had a bigger impact 
on the way people rap than Rakim did. Even though we wouldn't have Rakim, we wouldn't have Nas without Rakim. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So big you know, to the yeah. point where you got to think Illmatic comes out 94, right? Now, this is yeah. about to get real, whatever, hip hop But yeah. Mike Geronimo, The Natural album, his first album comes out November 28th, 1995. I remember the write up in the source and them giving him like two and a half mics or three mics on yeah. the album because they said, oh, he's from Queens and he sounds just like Nas. Mind you, they also right. said Royal Flush sounded like Nas and they even said Capone, which he did. He was, they said he was flowing, Capone from Capone Noriega was flowing like Nas. Yeah. They was I mean, like all of these Queens do with the first, I mean, at you, but we also have to take into account that because of Nas, Queens proliferated hip hop. Yeah, at yeah. that point. Um, and the, the first time I heard Mob Deep, mm -hmm. um, the first time I heard Mob Deep shit ones, I didn't know who it was, but I knew they knew Nas. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell. You, you can, can tell. You, you can, can hear see it. The relationship, yeah. the kinship. Can, there. Exactly. I didn't know who yeah. they were, but I knew they had to be down with Nas. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So he changed, and it and it bled out. It bled out, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but yeah, that's that's I, that was a great one. I think Nas that that illmatic flow that the the illmatic flow, right? Mm -hmm. Changed the landscape of hip hop. It was a lot of it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of ripples of DOS effects and leaders of the new school and that type of rap still lingering in hip-hop when Nas came. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of it. Uh, so what is it on me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to keep it old school, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say things changed forever in hip-hop when Run DMC released Walk This Way and, and, and hip-hop went mainstream for the first time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I have a question, actually. Yeah. I, I want to hear your explanation for why you say that. But I, but even in thinking of that, I came to a question. Is it because you feel like investors could see the viability yep. in the music of hip-hop? Yep. Okay. Yep. You hit the nail on the head. You didn't even have to ask it because that's exactly why. <laughs> I think it, it showed yeah. the 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 market viability of hip hop in a way that had never been displayed before. And on top of that, it carried it to an audience via that, that, uh, the, I mean, it's Aerosmith. It carried it to an audience right. that otherwise would have never been never. And it also played on MTV like thriller. Yeah. It was crazy. For which, that time. I mean, for that time it played yeah. on MTV. Like you couldn't cut MTV on without saying walk this way. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so much to the point it was like, you know, mm -hmm. you didn't have to like it. You was going to hear it anyway. So it, it just mm -hmm. crossed over in a way that nothing ever had. And I think that changed the way the the industry saw hip hop forever. I don't think they ever saw it again as something that, that wasn't viable. Right. right. You know, something they couldn't make a buck off of. Um, exactly. You know. Yeah. Uh Okay, that's a great one. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a, a decent one anyway. <clears throat> oh, man. Uh, see, I had something. Uh, I had one down that was kind of like that. It was advertisement slash marketing. Ooh. In, in, like, in total? Like, well, that's one thing that changed yeah. hip-hop forever. You know what? Yeah, I think when, when the advertisement, when, like, when... Hip hop became like a way to market products. Oh, and you can talk about my boy. When hip hop replaced themes and music, like when they, it replaced the rock for soundtracks mm -hmm. and movie scores. Mm -hmm. When that started happening, I think that that was one of the things that changed hip hop forever. Uh, um, just because finance, just the financial then aspect. It, it, if that's the case, then you know we gotta talk about my boy. We gotta talk about Steve Stout because he's pretty much the father of that right there. Yeah, Product yeah, placement yeah. in hip hop, marketing in hip hop. Like he, he was the mm -hmm. first to start take advantage of the of that viability. You know what I mean? That yeah, 
You know I mean that, that that we could be the lifeblood of a product and carry it to the top. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think that's dope. And I yeah, I think that's dope. Salute Steve Stout. A lot of people don't love him, but yeah, the mark he made on hip hop, you just can't business wise. Oh, it's undeniable. You, yeah, it's yeah. undeniable. It's undeniable, and the benefits of it. You know, he didn't put something on hip hop that didn't help us. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, uh, yeah, I think that's a really good one, bro. I think that's a good one. Uh, I'm gonna say. And I got this one. I got to give my man a shout out. I just met him today, as a matter of fact. Uh, DJ Grant. You know what I mean? We got a project we're working on. You know what I mean? Me and a couple of the fellas. Uh, he's going to be heavily involved. And I told him about the show today and what the topic was going to be. And he hit me with the introduction of the TR-808. Okay. So, see, so I've been waiting. Because I yeah. was waiting for you to see... Um, <laughs> you know it is crazy. Yeah. Even before you said that, when earlier when you was talking about the Nas lineage, right? Mm-hmm. Cool G. Uh, when you talked about people that was able to pick it up after Rakim, like Kane, KRS, whatever. I was going to ask you. This is funny. I, I didn't want to interrupt. I was going to ask you, yo, just as a random side note, yo, did you ever like D Nice? Because I love D Nice. When call me D Nice. Came out like that single, and I bought the album. I love that. I mem- that's one of the first albums yeah. I memorized from top to bottom, honestly. Wow. But but like remember that was one of the songs with, with KRS doing the hook, the T R A. Oh man, right yeah. in early in the morning. But yo, so anyway, I knew you was going. I knew it was going to get the machinery, and I wrote down. Okay. I wrote down MPC. SP twelve hundred because the music is going to change as right. new equipment. That's right. You know what I mean is 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 being introduced or made available. That's right. So beside that, I have the introduction of TR eight hundred eight, etc. The Lin drum machine, the MPC, mm-hmm. the SP twelve hundred. I have yeah, all those written down. But the eight hundred eight, I think, changed everything forever. I mean, we still use it. Right. We not right. only do we still use it, you don't hear ninety percent of the songs you hear today on the radio are based on the eight oh eight. Right. Mm-hmm. If you take the eight oh eight away from the song, the song don't exist. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that machine changed everything for it ever. It might have taken a while. I mean it changed it changed eighties hip hop. It changed, you see what I'm saying, that era. Mm-hmm. But it continued. To to dig itself in the 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 core of what we do is hip hop, and it completely is taken over at this point. So I think that mm-hmm. drum machine, um, the MPC changed everything, uh, mm-hmm. but that eight oh eight I think is that is that first one. I think maybe the Lin drum machine might have changed uh, R and B a little bit more than the eight oh eight. I, maybe more than it did hip hop, but I know the eight hundred eight was was nuts in hip hop. So yeah, yeah, but yeah. You, yeah, you was on the right path with that one. You yeah. was on the right path with that one. Uh, what you got? Um. Oh man. Oh man. Some of the stuff is like kind of. All right, so I'm gonna go with million dollar record deals. Ooh. Oh, okay, okay. Um, what about yeah. last shows where we where we are talking about the three greats in every era, and then we get to that time of like ninety nine to early two thousands. But during that time is where we also we talked about before seeing the transition of this. We're seeing the change, the face of hip hop as we know it kind of changing we well i'll put it like this you're, you're seeing a greater commercialization of the right. music you're seeing more larger deals being made yeah. way more money being pumped in yeah and that, and that changes everything because and the reason why i say it changes everything all the way from then up to now is because then it ends up changing people motive for getting for doing it for doing right. the art right right 
So, okay, I, I 100% agree. I 100% agree, right? I 100% agree with that. Uh, would you say that, who did you, when would you say that started, like with Master P and, and yeah, them? I, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like around I mean, the Master P, Cash Money, the, Bad 90, Boy. 99, yeah. Yeah, around that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you think a Han, Han single came out uh, my senior year, 98, going into 99. Right. But I, I'll put it to you this way. In 97, in 97, Arista mm-hmm. Records cut Puffy a check for $67 million. Yes. A bonus, a bonus check. I was trying not to say too much about Puff, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But And, and, and then, mm-hmm. right, so... The money started coming in. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so we can, we can, yeah. I would say, yeah, that era, that, that, mm-hmm. the, the, the bad boy, no limit, cash money, those deals, like those, that, that motion started introducing the, the huge deals. Mm-hmm. That and everything that was happening at, uh, at Def Jam. Def Jam. With, yeah. with, uh, Rockefeller, Rough Riders, and Murder Inc. Um, respectively yes so those million dollar deals it it did i think that 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 changed the core of what we 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 started striving for um and that shifted to attention later but that's a whole different topic right um i think these next two things that i'm gonna say i can run together right okay even though they're kind of separate but i'm gonna run them together uh and this is jumping I'm jumping around now. I ain't I ain't doing them in order no more. Uh Little mm. Wayne becoming the prototype mm. for what you see as a rapper. And oh, the, Lil Wayne becoming the prototype for what? For what you see as a rapper. He's the prototype. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like Got face it. tats, mm-hmm. dreads, skinny. Face tats, yeah, braids. Yeah. Jewelry, like he was what you mm-hmm. like. He was the what you see now is what Wayne started, right? Period. Like it ain't no denying that what we looking at now in the game is what Wayne started, uh, and what we hear, I think, is wildly influenced by the broad acceptance of auto tune. <laughs> Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I think that changed hip hop also. I'm going to tie those together because I think Wayne is one of the reasons that auto tune became broadly accepted. You know, uh, of well, course, T Pain. Huh? I said T Pain stood next to him. He absolutely did. He absolutely that did. That helped to yeah. make it more acceptable if you stand there, with the hottest rapper. We'll see that. Yeah. But see, the thing is, it's like, T-Pain was using it, right? Yeah. He was using it well. He was using it beautifully. You see what I'm yeah. saying? He stood next to Wayne. Wayne decided that he could use it too. Yeah. That's what happened. And then Wayne ran off with it. And but Wayne decided he could use it just rapping, everybody else said, hell, I could do that. And that became mm-hmm. the standard because Wayne was the standard. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Like, I think that's why it became the standard. It, he did get it from Pain. Everybody got it from T Pain, but they decided that it was cool because Wayne said it was cool. Right. That's what I'm saying. Him exactly. standing next to Wayne and Wayne carrying it, it made it it made him acceptable. Well, okay, because yeah, I, like, Wayne. Like, yes, but see, this is the thing. This is the thing. Like. I think they had already accepted the way T Pain was using it, right? Yeah, but I agree. There, there weren't many people that could use it the way T Pain used it, so nobody else was really using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when Wayne used it the way he used it, not necessarily standing next to T Pain and making it cool, but using it the way he used it, it was like, oh, we could use it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, yep. Mm-hmm. We could we could say oh pop champagne oh pop champagne that's not mm-hmm. what T Pain's doing that's closer to how to rock how to love yeah 
or a lollipop. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like mm-hmm. we could use it like Wayne, so they started using it like Wayne. Nobody else is still ain't used it like T Pain. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Wayne yeah, being true. the prototype, I think helped burgeon Auto Tune's acceptance. Yeah, you know, uh, but yeah. it changed everything because you don't hear anything without Auto Tune on it. Yeah. Yeah, I was recording something the other time. Other it was it was a couple weeks ago at the studio, and it sounded decent. I and mean, we went and put auto tune on it, and now it's trash. <laughs> so now we got you know what I mean. Like it's like, mm-hmm. but the artist assumes that it's supposed to have auto tune on it. It's like, bro, you yeah, sing yeah. it fine. Like you not that ain't even what you're doing. But right. that's neither here nor there. Uh, what you got on there? Oh man, uh, I got some stuff that's gonna be hit or miss on my list. It's all good. It's uh, all good. But I will say, I say one of the things I got battling, and I say mm. battle, not even the new age battling, but just the the original battle, some old, some old, uh, cool mo D L L Cool J. You know what okay. I mean? So okay. battling, and I say that because it made. It made it like no other musical genre. This is the hip hop is the most competitive genre. The battling yeah. and people proclaiming they the best or the nicest, you know what I mean? Yeah. It made it. Yeah. It made it super competitive. So I, I feel like when when that whatever the first battles you want to mention ever, it it's, it laid the ground yeah. for the for the spirit of competitiveness in hip hop that we see all the way up today, where people are still arguing about who the best. Yep. As yep. opposed to just making yep. your music and putting it out. Yep. And and I would dare to say that the battling that you're talking about mm-hmm. was birthed from because one thing that doesn't get spoken about in hip hop. Is that hip hop was really hip hop was born in the Bronx. Yeah. But the art form that birthed hip hop was born in Jamaica. Right. With the sound with the sound clash. And that was two DJs being it, it battling. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. And that ended up turning into part jams. Right. It, 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 which most of the uh DJs even then in New York were still battling with sound systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we're from uh, the islands, but yeah, that's that's a fact. So the battle is one of the; it has to be one of the most ten important things that happen in hip hop because it became part of the fabric of hip hop, right? You know, all the way to the day. Uh, sadly, we don't get as many battles; we get more beefs. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but every once in a while, we get a good battle. You know what I mean? We, we can get a good battle every once in a while. Uh, I like that one, though. Mm-hmm. I like that one, though, because it, it speaks to the fabric of what it is. Like, it's 10 things that, that changed hip-hop forever. Like, it wouldn't be what it is without that. Right, right. You it wouldn't. I mean? Right. I, ironically, even yeah. in talking about that one, we covered another one, whether we want to deal with it or not. But beefs. Changed yeah. hip-hop. Yeah, but we said we was going to leave. All the way up to this point. See, if there was no beefs that started, well, you wouldn't have drill rap and smoking on this person and that person. Well, that's a fact. That's a fact. But I think that's more of a... I don't disagree. I just think we starting to enter into the streets. No, no. Okay, good. I and can't less, see you. And that's the music. I can't see you right now, but if you can see me... I'll yeah. show you right here on my list. You just said we entered into the streets. That's that's a, that was one of my ones. The streets. Yeah, the streets entering hip hop. Ten yeah. things that changed hip hop forever. Yeah, yeah street. definitely. Street money. I mean, the crazy thing is, it was street money was always there. Street influence was always there. Yeah, uh, that's how that's how the 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 dude that had talent. In the in the hood, ended up with studio time in the first place. Somebody with some right. with, with disposable income financed that dream for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always been there, but then it got to a point where the people doing the financing realized they could reap all the rewards. 
Yeah. They you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can get I can get the money, I can get the popularity, I can get everything, and cause they telling my story anyway. You see what I'm saying? Why am I right. running around protecting this guy? You see what I'm saying? When I'm the actual tough guy. So then we ended up with a whole lot of street stuff. I mean, yeah, antics. But we said we was gonna leave one thing specifically off this list. And so we gotta leave that part out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just because it's low hanging fruit, but yeah, yeah, it is. But the streets being introduced into hip hop did change it forever. I just don't know when I when I would pinpoint it taking over. Right, right. Yeah. It just happened so gradually. It seems like it, it you know, it all fast. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Um. Some of the things I think actually kind of run together because we talked about million dollar record deals, right? Yeah, advertising, marketing. I said Mm -hmm. this actually will tie into it, but uh, maybe you, maybe not. But radio, Hmm. hip hop being broadcasted on the radio. I don't, I you know, I don't know that that changed hip hop forever. But okay, talk to me. Talk to me. I, I'm just the reason, I just yeah, said the what, reason why yeah. I say that ties sure. into the, the billion dollar deals, the right, marketing right, advertisement because right. that that became a thing where people was just see what, what I'm saying when I'm looking at things that changed it. It may not have changed every artist and everyone, but a lot of people then were just trying to make music right to get on the radio. But well, that became yeah. the thing. That was like part, like the pinnacle of getting your music played on the radio. Having a hit, it was a thing to have a hit single on the radio. Like yeah. even even recently, when we get in this producer beef, hit that's hit make a whole argument towards Hit Boy. Nah, my stuff is on the radio. You see? Yeah, like, I totally like understand. You, but that's that's good. always been the goal of the music industry. Like that's been the point. It now it just got to a point where radio decided they were gonna play hip hop, but the goal was to get the shit on the radio. I, yeah, I get that, but I'm I guess I'm saying for the actual artist that's making the music. Like Nas, we love the album Illmatic. He didn't have nothing on the radio. Right. None of, like I can name you know multiple albums and artists that we love that are major artists that didn't you know that makes stuff that didn't have it on the radio. Now a puff, he gonna make sure it ain't no way nothing coming out over there and it ain't on the radio. Right, I understand. I, I understand. I just don't. I just don't think. I put it to you this way. I almost guarantee you that when Large <laughs> Professor and Nas got in the lab and did it ain't hard to tell they was praying to God somebody played that shit on the radio. Oh, they would they okay. They was out there. They, you don't somewhere. you don't you don't you don't pay for a fucking Michael Jackson sample and not expect that shit to get played on the radio. Yeah, well. You understand what I'm saying? Like I don't I I I do not think Everybody swinging for the fences look different, but I don't think niggas going to lab. I, that, not I guess that's what it is. Is that everybody that I didn't take in consideration? Everybody swinging for the fences looks different. Yeah. See, to me, it didn't look. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it, very it, yeah. evident when Puff do something. It's it's that's because it fucking works. It's because it works. Deal. It's because it works. That's why it's evident. Yeah. It's because it works. Right. That's why it's evident. It's because it and works. The sound of it, like okay, I I can hear this. This is going to be. This is radio friendly. Because that's why it works. It's it, it, it's done correctly. Because <laughs> yeah. if you're trying to get there, you see what I'm saying. Like that's yeah. kind of my point. Like if you're trying to get there and you missing the mark, then you're not mm-hmm. doing it right. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like hire somebody to do it. If that's what you're going for, you know what I mean? Like. That's the bitch. That's a whole different conversation. But yeah, I think yeah, radio yeah. did put a spark. I don't think it changed everything. I don't. I don't know if it changed everything. Um, but I think, like you said, I think it is part of that 
amalgamation of things that yeah, yeah, yeah. impacted the marketing, the million dollar deals, all that radio, all that thing did change the desires of an artist. Yeah, yeah. Coming in the game off the gate, right. you see what I mean? So, uh, uh, my next one I think I'm gonna say is the birth of Ruthless Records, Easy E, NWA, and Dre. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, I'm, it's interesting. That's interesting. Like, we had West Coast music before that, there were West Coast rappers before that, you know, mm -hmm. but they kicked the door down. They opened it up in a way that we were open to West Coast artists after that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they 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 popularized popularized the West Coast in a way that I mean the labels ran to the West Coast and just started signing shit up. Right. You know what I mean? So you know they kicked the door down in that way because it wasn't that way before. It wasn't right. that way. It was it was a lot of local rapper rapping, but they really did mash that door and make it make it so that it it wasn't only one region of people that were bona fide rap stars. Right, right. You know what I mean? Bona fide rap stars from from somewhere completely different than New York City. Right. Um, with with legendary staying power, you know what I mean. I don't know mm -hmm. that that had happened in that way before, mm -hmm. you know. And it definitely changed hip hop. Like, yeah. yeah. It, if 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 only speaking of the lineage that came from it, it, it changed, changed. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know? that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good I think one. I, I I like that one. Uh. I got another one I'm going to name real quick, man. I want to see how you feel about this one. Okay. Uh, Drake opening the borders to international music mm. in hip hop. Hmm. Oh, when you say borders, are you referring to, I feel like you're not only talking about like artists coming out of Canada, I feel like you're also talking about artists coming from overseas from UK. And Africa. And Africa. And if that's what you're referring to, absolutely. That's what I'm referring to. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, like... It won't, like... He 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 had a a, a huge hand in popularizing Afro beats in the U.S. Yeah. Um, he had a huge hand in popularizing the 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 sound of drill in the U.S. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like they they took like the style of drill. They took the sound that he took the style. It was you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I honestly believe without Drake. You don't have somebody like Burner Boy at Dreamville Fest. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, you feel me? That, that yeah, that's. I feel like that's easily understandable too. I, yeah, you know, sure. without the existence of somebody like Drake, they yeah. come in and do what he did to hip hop. He globalized it from the U.S. Mm -hmm. And we had never had anyone globalize it from the U.S. We had people going world tours and stuff like that, you know, be huge artists. But he globalized hip hop from inside. Of, from he came from somewhere else, came inside the U.S., globalized it. You know what I mean? And that, that, that and I don't think it's ever going to go back to just one thing. No. I think I think hip hop is is global in a way now that it it it, it it'll never revert back to to being less global no. in sound. No, no, it's just too far spread. Too far yeah. spread. Yeah, yeah, and too, and too so. many people involved in too many places. It'll never go back. Right. You mean you got you got hip hop stars that are? I mean, not that Drake makes somebody viable. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the acceptance of that sound in in the states, we we've been histo we historically didn't accept sounds from other places. Mm -hmm. If we didn't create it, we won't rocking with it. You know what I mean? Other than like reggae, you know, what I mean? it's got to be a standard, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. a. 
You know what I mean? But we didn't listen to nobody's drill. We didn't listen to nobody's Afro beats. We that's not that was not an American thing. Right. In, until you have an artist of Drake's caliber that can make a hit that's already acceptable here. Right. And and, and the, the proof of that is like um which could be saying akin to it or earlier forms of it, but like grind. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. UK grime. UK yeah. Grime. Yeah. Like that never got embraced and accepted in the US, not like drill. Say that again for me. I didn't hear you. I was saying that never got grime. UK grime never got accepted in the US because you're talking about how we generally didn't accept things. But that's right. But drill did. That's right. That's right. And and many drill artists did, yeah. I mean, he that boy has been powerful, man. Like that's 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 one thing that I and I was talking, I was talking to my girl and her son right before the show, right right before we started recording, and they were saying that they would say Drake brought singing to hip hop, and I would disagree. I get, oh yeah, so, yeah, I disagree, and I've had these conversations. Right. And, and I pointed out people were singing hooks. You go back yeah. to even um, A Z album, first album, Do or Die. Nas yeah. sings the hook, "Give me yours, give me, give yeah. me what you can get back," and really mm-hmm. singing on some yeah. semi melodic stuff. Uh, so, and then it's just too many examples. I mean, uh, Slick Rick, Buckshot Slick Shorty, Rick, uh, right? Uh, 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 Bone hey, Thugs and Harmony. Know. It, yeah. I mean, it's it's been now. Reason. Now he was the first one to completely not do that, and then do a like a R and B song, right? And then rap again. My argument would be that he's a one of one. Who else does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have artists like Rod Wave that do a hybrid, but they don't stop and spit bars, and then just go do a whole love song over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like he's a one of one. The only other person that came that comes the, there's two people maybe that come close to doing that is Cuddy and Ye. Mm-hmm. And Ye can't sing at all, and Cuddy That's can't funny. sing I, at all. Cuddy, uh, I don't but, like him singing. Ye, I actually like Ye singing a lot better than Drake singing personally. Nah, hell no. Uh, that don't even make sense. Yeah. That don't even make sense. Like hell no. Nah, cuz yeah, nah, you you bugging. Hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. Kanye ain't even singing, nigga. That nigga's just talking over tracks. <laughs> nah. That nigga is not singing. <laughs> yeah, shit, you call that nigga doing singing. That's not singing. <laughs> not that Drake is a good singer, but there's no That's way in the hell you gonna not. tell me that Drake is that Kanye's a better singer than Drake. That's crazy talk. Like no, no, no. we have to that's absolute songs. that's absolute crazy talk, bro. Oh, okay. Well you put up some songs. I ain't gotta pull up nothing. That's crazy talk. <laughs> I, I don't that's think talk that's talk like, from crazy town. Drake singing don't sound any better that's, than that's, me singing. That's me that's all. talk from crazy town. Nah. God knows. Yeah, that's absolute crazy that's talk. Now, I, Cuddy, I, I get it. Cuddy either, but <laughs> I understand Cuddy's style. Like I get it. Cuddy's a stylist. He ain't a singer. Right, you see what I'm but, saying he's not really right. a singer. But but you to your I mean? he's point, not really yeah. But the, but to your point about how Drake one on one, it's like kind of like Kanye West also is like one on one. So you're not just gonna find a lot of people that are going to do that. Right, you'll find people influenced by it, but you ain't gonna find people that that can pull it off. Just like so, and for what we like to to counter the argument that they made. I would dare say that Future is a bigger influence on what you hear today than than Drake is. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like Future I, and I Wayne so. are bigger Future influence on what you more. hear from kids than mm-hmm. melodically. Yeah, yeah. Than yeah. what you hear than what you ever heard from Drake. Ain't nobody out here doing what Drake was doing melodically. He might have gave them the boldness to do it, but he ain't, ain't nobody doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. You know, um so I, I, and I do understand why people credit Drake like he or, yeah like did originally because because of the level that he's doing it on and the exactly. appeal and the reach of it. So I exactly. get it. Exactly. Exactly. I yeah. totally get it. I totally get it. Um 
Did I have anything else on here? I got, I have some stuff. And some of them I throw out, we can just knock down. All right. then, but this one uh, needs to be said. <laughs> Brahmin and triplicate, Jazzo. That changed. Mm. And you got to give him credit for that. And even Twister acknowledges he, him being the origin of triplicate rhyming. And I've heard Jazzo himself break it down like him, you know what I mean, him doing it. Um, yeah. But but now, but it, it was funny because it was a time where everybody was doing a song or at least trying to do a song. And even now, which is why you didn't like when Benny tried to do it because you're like, why are you doing yeah. that? But uh, but that was something that forever lived on in hip hop that, that you know, Jazzo we get a credit. We don't find anyone yeah. earlier than him doing that. Rhyming and right. right. I would definitely say I would, I, I, I would accredit it to him. I don't know if I would say it changed things. You know what I mean? Uh, but it, okay, it, I get what you're saying. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it, it yeah. definitely added. It added. It added. A, it added another added dimension a, to hip hop. Yeah, it, it definitely added a, it added another dimension. I would say. Right, yeah. right. We had a bag, and he put something in that bad boy that'll right, forever right, right. be there. You see right. what I'm saying? He that'll forever be there. Yeah. Uh, now there is an argument to say that because he did introduce it. Mm-hmm. It was there to be iterated on. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it did mm-hmm. get iterated on to the point that we ended up with what we have now, which is what the Migos ended up creating. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Which is a is it's still a triplet flow. You know what I mean? But it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. where you put the triplet. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like, did it change it forever? Possibly, it just it may have changed it forever as slowly as the TR eight hundred eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it may I may be agreeing with you. It may have changed it just yeah. as slowly as the TR eight hundred eight. It right. got embedded in it, and then it became it. Its time came. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the TR eight hundred eight got embedded in hip hop, then its time came. Triplet flow got embedded in hip hop, and then its time came. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I ain't mad at that at all. I ain't mad at that at all. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say first I'm gonna say streaming. Yeah, that's there we go. There we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say streaming. Uh I wasn't gonna put that on my list. Uh no, that was good. Girl. That's the top. Yeah, five. yeah, but my 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 girl and her that's son good. gave me streaming. That's why I was gonna yeah. say my girl and her son gave me streaming. So, uh, yeah. but I think it did. It it changed. I mean, it moved the goalposts. Yeah, it did. And actually, and you know, as we're talking about things, ten things that you know changed hip hop forever. It don't have to necessarily be a good thing, because that's like when streaming first kicked off, even now it's not the same as you having a cassette or a CD in your hand and seeing the credits. Because you remember, it was a big time; they won't put no credits or nothing. Yeah, on. yeah it was. It, it, it's it's, it's even the way with, the music was received and dissected and yeah. taken in. It still is though, because because you don't have that tactile attachment to it. There's yeah. a lot. You mean there's there's a lot. There's there's a gap there. And there's right. a gap that that only only we would be able to recognize because, because there's a generation that, that never experienced it. Right, right. But 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 that's the thing. That's why it, I feel like it changed. It has changed right. it forever because before streaming, the music has existed in various forms. But the point is, it will never go back to right. a previous form in a digital right. age. You're only moving to more and more digital to deeper and deeper right. into levels of digital. And artificial right. intelligence, so uh, it ain't never going to go back. So it actually did change it forever. You know forever. what I mean? It, it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me ask you something. You remember when these won't double CDs and nothing like that? But like, you get a CD and it had like eighteen to twenty songs on it, and you'd be like, "Hell yeah, they gave me." You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That era. Um, yeah. Uh, but artists release a CD and they'd be like, yo, this joint got mad, you know? Yeah, and then yeah. it kind of died down and went back to something normal. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And now with streaming, we getting albums with 20 to 30 songs on them again. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah. think it's ever going to go back to the norm nah. on mass. 
no. because it makes more it, it makes more economical sense for you to have more songs on your album. Yeah, for more play. You know, yeah, it gives you opportunity for more streams. Right. You know. Uh, yeah, so I don't think it's gonna go back. I don't think it's gonna go back. You're right. Uh, streaming definitely changed it forever. Yeah. Uh, just the fact that you had to physically like to be a platinum selling artist for for a long time. I mean, a million people got up, traveled to a store of some sort. And pick your album out of all the music that was in there. Pick yours up, took it to the counter, and gave somebody some money for it. a million people. Did that shit at least? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a huge. That's mind blowing. Yeah, when you think like it, it wasn't so mind blowing at the time because it, it got to a point where it was fairly regular. Like it's right. just it, what, yeah, yeah, it, it just made sense. It was like buying groceries. If you want it, it you got to get up and go get it. You got to go get it, right? Uh, but I guarantee you to explain that to somebody that's 15 right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. You know, that's 15 right now. It's be like, yo, it meant a million people left their homes and went and bought a product by this one specific person to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And if it and sometimes that shit happened up to ten times, ten million times, like you know what I mean, like shit's insane. Yeah. And it's and and you know, and now they just telling us what they want us to know. I don't know what the hell the numbers mean no more, uh, yeah, as far as a million. Uh, no so clue. you know, no yeah, clue. I know what the, I know what the stat says is supposed to be. What is fifteen hundred streams and it equals one sale? Yeah, something crazy like that. That's bonkers. Yeah. Uh but yeah, streaming and the last thing I had written down before we get out of here, man, is uh social media. Woo! The big monster. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, that's another good big one. Monster. The big monster, social media. Yes. Uh so much so that you can't even get a record deal without your Having analytics it. on on social media mm-hmm. being uh, without them popping, if they ain't popping, they not signing you. Right, right. It's just like it, it, it's, uh, social media is a part of the artist portfolio. When you present yourself, your work is they want to see that. Like you saying, the analytics. Yeah, you know what's funny, yo. Social media is almost the artist portfolio. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, you can it, show you up and have pictures. It's going to have sound clips, clips of their videos. You know what I mean? Maybe them talking. So, like, it's, a, Listen, it's going to have everything. Show up show up with the same pictures, the same clips of them talking, everything you just named. Mm-hmm. But ain't nobody else on the planet seen it except for the person they showing it to. Yeah. It don't mm-hmm. mean shit. Mm-hmm. It only means something if mad people on the internet already seen it. Right. So that portfolio means nothing. Yeah, really. You could bring if you bring it in there outside of the context of social media without an audience of engagement, so what? Now mm-hmm. you have to take that information, put it on social media, get a response, and then show it to them. That's the portfolio. The analytics of the portfolio. Yeah. Not yeah. the content. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, content without engagement is like having no content at all. It's like having no content at all. You better off having no content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it's like, what'd you even do it for? <laughs> right. So yeah. Social media changed everything, man. It gave streaming and social media gave way more people access to being able to release music and market music mm-hmm. right but it also took place of the job of the talent scout uh yeah i mm-hmm. won't necessarily say the a and r i'm gonna say the talent yeah, I scout because I, 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 I think a and r still or in inside companies doing what a and r's do inside companies but they're no longer 
scouting for talent in the in the natural sense. The scouting yeah. for talent in the yeah. digital sense. Right, because it, it don't, you don't need to scout for talent because they, in the old way. Well, you don't need to because even if you find it, if it don't have no digital footprint, nobody's going to listen to you. Mm-hmm. So you might as well go find the digital one and then find the one with talent inside of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's the sad part. If it's just talent, they're not hearing it. Right. Got to have some numbers attached to it, some analytics. And social media definitely did that. And I think streaming did too. Even yeah. though it was a lot easier to get a deal back in the day if you was moving, if you can if you can get your shit barcoded up and move a few out the trunk. Cause we definitely thought about buying our own from ourselves just to show the numbers. Right, right. And, and that and that was one of the just like there were always have been games played. Right. And there were games played with physical copies, just like there are games being played with the streaming copies. Which is right. why Red Man, Method Man song how high he was like, where you go when you pay for your billboard spot, right? And then you, I've heard certain artists talk about how their label would buy X amount of albums. Yeah, and and then there was there were there were, that's definitely true. And there were times when they would throw platinum parties for artists that shipped a million records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But public perception is you shipped a million records, you sold a million records. Right. So that increases your, just like first week sales now. Mm -hmm. It's equivalent to first week sales now is creating a buzz based on existing popularity when you've ginned up existing popularity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, But yeah. I don't know, man. I wonder what the public thinks, like what we miss. Oh, I and, and based on, a lot. I, well, I know I missed yeah. a lot. I, I'm sure we missed a lot. I mean, hip hop has been existing for what? What this is 50 years now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's got to be more things that changed hip hop forever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Than than these 10 or 20 that we discuss, right? Because we discussed yeah. around 20. Uh, yeah. But. I would like to see, and I, I think though, based on the way we framed what we're talking about, I think they people that would have suggestions would be able to frame it similarly. You know what I mean, like in a in a in a similar mm-hmm. way, in in a, in, a, in a similar broad way. So it's not just right. you know the so it would fit in this list. And I would like yeah, to see yeah. in the comments, man. Tell us what you what we said that you feel like don't fit on the list. Like, nah, I ain't changing that. And if you feel that way, but if you got things that you think we missed, then add that in the comments, please. Uh, yeah. Cause it might be enough for us to do a whole nother show. Things we miss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, and if you, and if you add them in the comments and it's, and we end up doing another show, we'll definitely shout you out. You know what I mean? And this is one that came from so-and-so thing we missed. I think that'd be dope. Uh, but I like this list. I think it's pretty comprehensive, bro. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, I ain't gonna force nothing else on it, man. We had about an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think we. I think this is this is good. I got everything off my mind. I think you got everything off yours. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I got everything for sure. All right, well, shoot. I'm gonna ask y'all to go to uh, Facebook and Instagram and follow us at Conversate for a few. Go to YouTube and follow us at Conversate for a few. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when we drop every week. It is every Friday at 7 a.m. Uh, we'll be there for you. Uh, stay tuned for the limited edition Futane Clan merch. I promise it's coming. Stay tuned for the audio book. We're working on it diligently. Not as diligently as we should be, but we're yeah. going to start working on it more diligently immediately. Uh, and with that, man, I'm Jonna. I'm Alan. This was not a podcast about classical music. Absolutely was not. This is a podcast about hip hop. Make room for the tag. Conversate for a few. Conversate for a few. Hustle.
Welcome, man, they had to send me Hustle from Raleigh, live from NC With your hosts, John and Allen Relate to the two You are now listening to Conversate for a few Check it on SoundCloud, debate with your crew They talking hip-hop from the late to the new From July till June end No Fridays for me, tune in Please listen to this podcast Please listen to this podcast Please listen to this podcast. 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 Please listen to this podcast.